You guys, my name is Phanix and welcome to a new video. And today I want to talk about Hades Avencraft. Uh, it's a pretty good deck, especially after the nerfs. It does pretty well against many meta decks right now, and uh, even if the meta is not defined yet because we just had the balancing patch, I still think this will be one of the best decks until more cards will be nerfed. So let's not waste any time and start with the deck list. This is the deck I've been running. I'm not sure it's a perfect list, but uh, it performs really well for me. And uh, the cards you can see are one Sacred Plea and uh, one for Cleric. So let's talk about card choices. Three Sacred Plea, because you really need the card draw. And this is just the best option Havencraft has ever since it was released. Three Unicorn and Sedunica. It's just an uh, overall solid 2-drop. Uh, 3 Frog Clerics. I think this card is really underrated. Uh, I tried to play 3 of them and it performed really well for me. Uh, I think it has to do mostly with, with the fact that I'm finding so many aggro bloodcraft with Kraboss in ladder right now. So yeah, until uh, those, those decks are popular, this card is a very good choice. 2 now is Red Ranch Knight. I'm even considering running 3 of these, it's such a lifesaver card, and you can just drop it on tour 2 for tempo. Overall, a pretty solid card. 3 black in its scripture, nothing new here, it's just one of the best removals in the game. 3 Grimler War Cyclone, it's still a pretty damn strong card even after the nerf, especially in a deck like, like this that doesn't care too much about face damage but cares more about board control. And it's a great follow-up to Heavenly Ages too. Temple Defender, two copies. I decided to include this because it performs well against uh, cards like Bone Chimera or Forest Bats that are uh, really relevant in this meta, so I think you should consider running it too. Three Priests of the Cudgel, still one of the best four drops in the game, so nothing to say here. 3 Tribulan of Good and Evil, uh, overall really good card, especially good if you manage to play this so that it procs the, the turn where, uh, when you play Heavenly Ages, because it lets you play your win condition in a safer way. 2 Ancient Lion Spirit, uh, this card disappeared from the meta during the Neutral Craft Age, but I think that now that Neutral Craft are a bit less relevant and uh, Midrange Shadow and Agro Blood are more relevant, this card really shines. In fact, I'm uh, actually thinking about including a third one instead of the third Hair's Tea Time. Great card. 3 March Hair's Tea Time. As I said, I was considering cutting one of these for uh, the Ancient Lion Spirit, but it's overall such a great card. Teen Soldier is a perfect turn 5 play and you even get one more on turn 9. Overall just a pretty damn strong card, you can use it to clean uh, the board, you can use it to push for more face damage, very versatile. 2 Judges of Retribution, it's such a strong card that if it, if it didn't share the same cost of uh, Temis Decree, I would definitely run 3 of these. 3 Temis Decree, it's, it has been in every single Control Havencraft deck ever since the beginning, so nothing much to say here. 2 Curates. This card is such a lifesaver. Uh, the heal 5 to an ally is really a very very strong effect. And uh, it also has a very nice body. And of course 3 Heavenly Ages. I've seen lists running 2 of these, but uh, I think the 3 is the, the best number. This deck doesn't win if you don't play Heavenly Ages, so you really want to draw it. I didn't have any way to draw it from your deck with specific cards, so you just have to have one in your hand, which is why I prefer running 3 over 2. So now let's talk about other viable choices. Princess Snow White. It's still a pretty good 2 drop. I don't run it because, as you can see, I don't have it anymore. Uh, I don't think it's really necessary right now, but uh, it would be a good support for the deck. You can consider running it instead of the Frog Cleric if you want. And of course, if you run Snow White, you can consider running Heavenly Hound, because it combos so well with it. Having a turn 3, 2, 4 with Ward is such a huge deal, 
So yeah, if you run Snow White, consider running Heavenly Hound. Biscolaria. Overall a pretty strong card. I don't run it because I think it's a bit too slow to play this on 2 and don't and not play anything else. But uh, it helps your mid game so much. So you can consider running it. Iron Maiden. If the meta is full of small things, this can be better than uh, Tribulan of Good and Evil. Because you have you can remove two things with this card. So a good card to keep in mind. Radiance Angel. This card heals you and draws your card, so overall it's a solid card. I just think that uh, it's hard to fit in the deck because Ancient Lion Spirit and uh, March Hare's Tea Time are so strong, but uh, still a good card. Odin. In a meta in which Seraph Haven and uh, Nettis Shadow are more relevant, Odin can be a good tech card, so consider it. And last, Bahamut, because playing uh, Bahamut when you already have an Evil Ages on the board is such a strong play, but uh, it's a bit hard to fit this card in, because it can make your deck a bit more clunky. Still, many lists uh, have run Bahamut in the past, and uh, if you like it, you can consider running it too. And now, let's watch some replays. So the first game is against Agro Bloodcraft, and going second. You know? Repair for defeat. Going second, I decided to, to keep Priest of the Cudgel. Usually you want to look for your early game, but if you go second, Priest of the Cudgel is a good choice to keep. I don't find anything, unluckily. No! So he plays his one drop. And uh, I draw into Nice, which is good. It's me, so he plays his Venia. I could play now is here, but I think removing Venia was better because you could, you could play someone Blood King. No! So it just deals me to damage. And here, of course, I don't have much of a choice. It wasn't a good play, but uh, I didn't have any 3 drops, so. So, of course, here I'm going to play my Priest of the Cudgel. You done for. With the effect I removed it too. Here I could decide to to remove the forest bat. And it was the best choice actually. So that this didn't die to Knight Sword. Uh, so this is a, a bit of a misplay but uh, it doesn't get punished. Still pushes for more face damage, you will soon learn. and even evolves aggressively. So here I have a perfect ancient lion spirit. So as you can see, this card can be really strong in this meta. And of course, the regular face. He starting uh, to run off of steam. So here it has a very obvious play, like why would you ever play Razor Reclaw if you didn't, if you weren't going to set up little with it. It's much better to keep it for a surprise effect. Since he did this, I knew he had 5 damage in his hand, so this could be an influencer. And uh, here is where noise shines, as we'll see. Of course I go for the full clear here. And I decided not to put him in Vengeance in case that was a Dark General. It was an Implanter. So this will be lethal, but it's not. Thanks to Nice. And Curate just heals me to 7. Of course here I take the clear. And I start pushing for face damage. Because at, that, at this point I don't care if that's a Dark General. So I just heal myself even more. Place Demonic Strike, I'm at 6. But uh, I have more heals, thankfully. Which means that this game is pretty much won. In fact, he surrenders. Next game is against Shadowcraft. 
And I'm going first. So here I still look for my early game. I I decided to keep to keep Grim here because it's a good uh, turn three. And I draw into Black Knight Scripture, which is not as good when going first. So here I could decide to remove the one two or to keep the Black Knight Scripture. I decided to remove it because I was going to play a turn three Grimir, and uh, if he played a two two now, he could just remove it with double trade. So I prefer to protect my Grimnir. Saving the Black Knight Scripture was a fine play too. So, just, as I predicted, he plays uh, two play points to two, and the Tenant of the Knight. So my best play here is just killing the Grimnir with Frog Cleric, because I didn't want to waste my Priest of the card. And he plays his second attendant of the night. This was kind of a weird play. He could just suicide this 1 1, but uh, he decided not to take it. So, of course, I have a full clear with Priest of the card here. And I take it. Kills my piece of the cudgel and uh, doesn't have anything better to play. So I'm just forced to skip my turn. And my hand is so bad, I have 3 of the ages. It's so clunky. He does another weird play, which is so converting uh, a 3 3, which was pretty good on the board. So I play a tempo curate because I don't have any better play. And uh, he has one sad actor. It was nothing good with just one zombie. So he clears my board, but uh, that's no big deal. And I destroy it with the world. While playing at tempo, now he's. So, I knew he had uh, an actor in his hand at this point, but uh, I was afraid I really needed the Banish effect, so here I had two choices, play the Heavenly Ages and evolve it right away, or just play it and don't do anything. Evolving it was the safer play, but uh, I wanted to be a bit more greedy, so that I could evolve Priest of the Cardinal next turn. This because he was at, at 16 which means that two attacks would just kill him anyway. But this was a really risky play, because he could just put me at 11 by summoning Hector. And since he played Cerberus earlier in the game, he could uh, finish, finish me with the Phantom Owl. Still, I decided to go for the grid play and play Heavenly Ages without doing anything else. Sector again, Stop, no! and I'm at 11. This was a number I really wanted to avoid, but uh, thanks to the Black Knight Scripture, I can clear the board the without giving him too many shadows, and I can clear, kill the Hector too. So I was really scared about uh, Phantom Hole here, but uh, it looks like he doesn't have it. He just plays his Bone Chimera, and my Tribunal will kill it, summoning two skeletons. I play my second Heavenly Ages, at this point I just didn't have any other, any other choice. If he had Phantom Hole, I would just lose. But uh, he doesn't, so I win. And this will be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you make your own version of Aegis Havencraft because it's such a strong deck. If you have any deck requests for my next video, just ask in the comment section below, and I'll see if I can help you. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.